Welcome to the video on training for aerobic endurance. We'll initially start off with a definition and a bit of clarity as to what we mean by aerobic endurance, and then we'll talk about how we do it. How do we get fitter as far as our aerobic endurance is concerned? Let's find out. Okay, let's begin by defining the term aerobic endurance, aerobic endurance. So the definition I'm giving you is Aerobic endurance is the ability of the aerobic energy pathway to supply energy for exercise while resisting fatigue. And that while resisting fatigue is kind of the key part when we're talking about aerobic endurance. The idea of endurance is precisely that. It's, it's continuing without getting tired. It's going on. It's, it's, um, it's keeping on working. So we need to resist fatigue. So we need to train at a level that is going to produce adaptations in our body systems that allow us allow the aerobic energy pathway to be utilized for either a longer period of time or for a slightly higher intensity and still resist fatigue so what are the key principles when it comes to doing this so the first thing we need to think about as with any of this kind of exercise and training we need to consider carefully the interplay between the duration of the exercise and the intensity of the exercise because as the intensity goes up as we head towards 100 percent whether it's sprinting or whatever it might be the duration has to come down those two things have to interplay against one another so for aerobic endurance where do we need to pitch it for aerobic endurance, we need to make sure that the intensity is high enough to create some adaptations. That's obvious. But also, the intensity should be low enough not to jeopardize duration. Okay, so almost as if we're focusing on duration and we're manipulating intensity in order to focus on duration. So the intensity of our training should be low enough not to jeopardize our ability to go for the period of time that our event demands. So whether it's a marathon or a triathlon or an ultra marathon or whatever, our training intensity or the purpose of the training should be to train um, at an intensity low enough not to jeopardize duration. That is not to tip over from aerobic endurance into another component of fitness, such as muscular endurance. And so in order to do that, we need to be training below what's known as the obla, the obla. And I'm not going to get into that in this video, but very briefly, the obla is the point at which the blood lactate starts to accumulate so rapidly that we can no longer break it down and get rid of it. It's essentially the point at which we're no longer predominantly working aerobically. We're not supplying sufficient oxygen to meet the demand of the muscles. And obla stands for the onset of blood lactate accumulation it's the point at which we kind of cross over from training our aerobic endurance into training something similar but not quite the same muscular endurance so there's a there's almost a threshold or a tipping point between the two and we'll talk about that in more clarity and more detail in another video but the intensity should be low enough not to jeopardize duration so it's got to be below the onset of blood lactate accumulation so how do we actually achieve that so one of the ways we, i mean we could actually test for blood lactate that is that is possible but that's not really practical or practicable in a in a in a training setting it can be done but it's perhaps not the best way of doing it um because it's quite invasive of course you've got to actually take someone's blood to do it so what you would do is you would use vo2 max or percentage vo2 max to be specific and target that percentage vo2 max to make sure you're roughly just in or around or just below the onset of blood lactate accumulation because then we know that our intensity is high enough to get the adaptations we want in terms of aerobic endurance but not so high um, that we are we're tipping over into muscular endurance and not so low that it's too easy and not causing any adaptations so we're going to target a particular percentage vo2 max which i'll tell you about in just a second but again, you might not know how to work out your VO2 max. There are certain, you know, uh, watches and things and uh, devices that you can use these days that will, will, will kind of calculate the, that for you. But there's an even more simple way of doing it. And that is to um, estimate your VO2 max or percentage VO2 max that you're working at, either from heart rate or from related metrics such as heart rate reserve, 
or very, very simply and nice and usefully for most of us, uh, rate of perceived exertion. So the RPE has actually been shown to correlate really nicely with VO2 max or percentage of VO2 max. So RPE, this rating often used on the Borg scale, gives us a really good, very accurate indicator of where we are in terms of our percentage VO2 max. So we'll use our RPE for the most part. It's, it's possible then to go, you know, go into a lab and do things more scientifically and technically. But the RPE is a very useful uh, tool to tell us where we are in terms of our intensity for our training. And we'll, we'll come back to that in just a second. So what are the methods that are available for aerobic endurance training? Well, I'm going to suggest three key methods that we could use. The first of which is known as continuous or LSD training. Secondly, there's long interval training. And thirdly, finally, there's something called fartlek training, fartlek training. So continuous LSD training, we'll look, at, we'll look at that first, then long interval training and then fartlek training. So LSD training simply means long, slow distance training, long, slow distance training, LSD training. And this is, as we've said, it's training below the obla. It might be quite near to the obla. It might be a little, little off the obla, but it's, it's below it for certain. And it's going to be at a constant pace and it's going to be without stopping, hence the term continuous. So continuous or long, slow distance training. And in terms of duration, I mean, it varies depending on the event that you're training for, but it's probably going to be somewhere between an hour, maybe two hours in terms of training. Now, if you're training for a marathon, it's very unusual and very rare to train for a marathon by doing marathons. But you would certainly need to train by doing a long slow distance training and so you'd be um, you're running for an hour a couple of hours and you'd obviously vary that uh, within your training program so in terms of intensity then uh, we're looking at as we've just mentioned a percentage vo2 max in order to get up and up and around or near the obla but not past it we're looking at somewhere around 60 to 70 percent of your vo2 max or we're looking at somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of your maximum heart rate or even more simply we're looking at somewhere around 13 to 15 on the Borg scale for of, of rating of perceived exertion so you'll know the Borg scale runs from six which is um, entirely sedentary about to fall asleep all the way up to 20 which is about to die <laughs> from the intensity of the activity 13 to 15 is where you want to be pitching your aerobic endurance training if you forget everything else about this video that's the key thing that's the simplest way of targeting aerobic endurance is to be working out what you perceive to be about 13 14 or 15 out of 20 in terms of intensity that will get you to the point at which the adaptations will be beneficial for aerobic endurance so an example of this might be a 75 minute road cycle at about 75 percent of your maximum heart rate or a 75 minute road cycle at 14 uh, RPE. The second type of training, the second kind of training is something known as long interval training. Now, interval training is a catch all term really. There's lots of different ways of doing interval training, but we're specifically focused because we're focusing on aerobic endurance, then our intervals are gonna be long intervals. So unlike long, slow distance training, long interval training, will set the overall pace a little bit higher. So the overall pace will be a little bit higher, but it will incorporate periods of time where the, the athlete is doing active recovery. So short periods of time within the interval training, within the training where there are active recovery periods. So whereas continuous training is a steady pace throughout, this time we're going to set the overall pace slightly higher or the target pace slightly higher, but we're going to incorporate some moments or some sections or some segments or some intervals in which the pace is going to significantly drop. We're going to continue. It's going to be active, but the pace will significantly drop and then we'll have a short period of time and then we'll go back to the pace again that we're, we're setting for our overall training pace. So we're going to incorporate these active recovery periods. And so you can manipulate these intervals depending on what adaptations you're aiming for and that's true of any interval training so again we're talking about long interval training so we're going to alter the work rest ratio 
So the amount of time at which we're we're running or cycling or swimming or whatever it might be at our at our higher, slightly higher pace, and then the amount of time that we're at the recovery pace. And we can alter the ratio between those two things. And in altering the ratio, we can either move up towards the obla or we can drop down away from the obla depending on what we're trying to achieve. So as far as aerobic endurance adaptations are concerned, the work to rest ratio should be no more than about one to two. And usually, as it says here, usually significantly less. So that is the highest intensity really that you should be working at if you're if you're targeting aerobic endurance. The highest intensity as far as work rest ratios are concerned, uh, let's say uh, you work for a minute at such an intensity that it requires you to have a two minute rest. Really, you should probably that's that's right at the upper limit in terms of the intensity for aerobic endurance training. You should be probably a decent bit below that one to one um, or two to one uh, or even even. Um, longer work intervals and shorter rest periods or at least the ratio be, be less so for example a couple of examples here that might be you might do eight um three minute cycles and in between each of those three minute cycles you might have a 30 second recovery so that's a that's a six to one ratio okay or another example might be you might do five 1000 meter runs around a athletics track and then once you've done your thousand meters, which is two and a half laps, then you'll take a full lap of active recovery. So you won't just stop and stand still. You'll continue to jog, but it'll be a super slow recovery pace. And then you'll pick back up again after your recovery lap. You'll do another thousand meters at a slightly higher pace, uh, perhaps than your race pace uh, or, or close to your race pace, at least. And then put in another 400 meter recovery. So those are the intervals. And in doing that, again, we're targeting aerobic endurance because what we're really targeting is we're training the body to break down and get rid of a lactate. But we're also targeting some adaptations that allow us to provide oxygen more efficiently to break that lactate down. So we're, we're pushing back the obla, if you like. So the third method is something called fartlek training. Now, fartlek is a Swedish word. And it literally means speed play, speed play. And it's a variation on interval training uh, that we've just discussed. So whereas long interval training generally sets the pace quite high and intersperses that relatively high pace with uh, recovery periods, fartlek almost switches it on its head. So what fartlek does is we have steady state exercise, uh, relatively comfortable, not completely easy, but relatively comfortable. And then we intersperse it with higher intensity bouts of exercise. So we might be jogging along at a relatively comfortable pace and then suddenly we'll throw in a, a short sprint or perhaps not a sprint, but an increase in the pace. That's what fartlek is. It's kind of you can almost think of it as the opposite of long interval training. So the steady the steady state is quite low. And then every now and again, we have a burst of higher intensity activity. The point about it, though, is that it's not exactly interval training. It's not the same because the intervals are not set in advance. They're not set. They're not they're certainly not rigid. Um, it doesn't have to be timed necessarily. I mean, it could be, but it doesn't have to be. But the idea is that the intervals are random and flexible. And the randomness is what causes the adaptations. It's the randomness that keeps the body guessing in that sense. So it's intended to be fun. It's intended to keep the body guessing. It's intended to be flexible. You're intended to play around with it, hence the name speed play. So what could that look like then? So it could be a 5K run. You could go out for a 5K run at a reasonable pace, not, not super intense, but not too easy, but at a moderate pace, 5K run, and then maybe just, just shy of race pace, shy of your 10K race pace, something like that, or, or, or maybe even about your 10K race pace. Go out for your 5k run and then 15 times randomly whenever you get to a lamppost you know you see a lamppost coming up and you think you know when i hit that lamppost i'm going to pick up the pace for three lampposts you get to that lamppost and off you go you, you pick up the pace pick up the intensity three lampposts and then you slow down again back to your steady state pace or your 10k race pace or whatever it is you decided was your steady state so you can do that between lampposts, you can do it between trees, whatever, it really doesn't matter. You can do it between green doors and red doors. It depends on where you're running and the environment that you're in. Uh, 
but it should be flexible it should be fun it should keep the body guessing and a second example might be you, you might go out for a 20 minute cycle um uh, again a reasonable pace and then you might be cycling out with your coach or you might be in in a fitness suite with your coach you're you're on the you're on the bike and your coach is going to blow a whistle at random intervals and when the coach's whistle goes you've got to put in a 10 second sprint just 10 seconds and then back to the back to the steady state pace again so what you're doing is you're provoking the muscles to work slightly harder for a short period of time the lactate is going to build up but then you're not going to continue that for long enough for the lactate to get past the obla okay or it's certainly not much past the obla and then you're going to return to the steady state pace where the oxygen is being supplied sufficiently to break that lactate down the idea is you're targeting the adaptations of increased oxygen intake but also improvement in the quality and the speed of the breakdown of the lactate that's being produced in those short bursts so you're essentially trying to improve your ability your your aerobic endurance capacity right up near where your obla is and in fact maybe even over time push that obla back so you get even better um, at breaking that lactate down right up towards your uh, the top end of the intensity and that is what is then going to set you apart from the competition you might have a similar vo2 max to somebody else but if your obla is pushed back further you can work at a slightly higher intensity for slightly longer you're going to win that race so those are our three methods of training We've looked at continuous training or long slow distance training we've looked at long interval training which intersperses a relatively or comparatively high pace with recovery periods and then fartlek training which has a relatively um, safe pace if you want to think of it that way with increased bouts of higher intensity so i hope that's been helpful don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe um, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, in the meantime, take care for now. Enjoy the rest of your day.